Number seven, define the following and give an example of each. And then we have the hydrogen bond. Okay, now in this case, when we're talking about a hydrogen bond, we are not talking about just a bond to hydrogen. Specifically, a hydrogen bond is a type of intermolecular force. So when we're talking about molecular uh, hydrogen bonding, specifically in this question, we are talking about the molecular force, intermolecular force, hydrogen bonding. Now just know that if we are classifying this as an intermolecular force, just know that inter, think of international, and international is like when you have like two different countries, right, communicating with each other. That's international. So international just means different, different countries. But in this case, if it's intermolecular, it's got to be different molecules. So we're not talking about a force that exists between one molecule. We're talking about a force that is talking about communication of two molecules, at least two. So hydrogen bonding, by definition, is an intermolecular force in which a hydrogen that is either bound to three different options. Now we're talking about a very, very, very polar bond. And to get polar bonds, it's got to come from the most electronegative elements. So if I just quickly, let's see, oh boy, no, I don't like that. Let's do, let's do it in the pen. Beautiful. What kind of, what kind of rectangle was that? Okay. Ah, uh, whatever. We'll, we'll keep with it though. So electronegativity Remember, as you go from left to right, your electronegativity is increasing. And as you go from top to bottom, your electronegativity is decreasing. This is a very, very, very polar bond. We're dealing with only the most electronegative elements on the periodic table. And that's found in the upper right-hand corner, oxygen, Actually, technically, on the periodic table, it's nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. These are your three elements that the hydrogen can be bound with. So I'm looking at either a hydrogen that's either bound with a nitrogen, an oxygen, or a fluorine. So you have to have one of these components, an HN bond, an HO bond, and an HF bond. So we're getting closer. Hydrogen bond is an intermolecular force in which you have this type of bond, one of these, in one molecule interact with a N O or F of another molecule. Okay. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just pull this maybe a little bit closer, throw the F up there so that we have all the blues up there. And then, okay, there you go. So basically, if you can spot out that your molecule has an HN bond, an HO bond, or an HF bond, that bond or that molecule can have hydrogen bonding with itself. And the example that is given here is water. Now, if I draw water, water has oxygen in the, in the middle surrounded by two hydrogens and two lone pairs. Now, just like we said, oxygen is going to be the way more electronegative element because hydrogen is all the way over here. And as you go from left to right, you increase in electronegativity. So you have a partial negative. This little funky symbol here just means that you have a dipole, a difference in charge. But since oxygen is the more electronegative, it's got the partial negative, and the two hydrogens here have a partial positive. But now, since I spot out that in water I have an OH bond, I actually have two of them. Right, I have an OH on one side, and I have another OH on the other side. 
I have the option for this molecule to hydrogen bond with another water molecule. And what's going to happen is, remember, opposites attract. So the positive hydrogen will want to be very, very, very close to, what do you think? A partial negative or the partial positive, if opposites attract? Yeah, it's going to want to be next to the negative. And if we're talking about another um, oxygen or water molecule, it's the oxygen that it's being attracted to. And then you have another water molecule. I got O and O, two lone pairs. And the same exact thing. These hydrogens are the positives. And the system keeps continuing on and on and on. Here you have another hydrogen bond. It's an OH. So it can keep on binding and binding and binding. And that way you create an army. All of these little dots here are the hydrogen bond. So the hydrogen bond would be this. It would be this. These guys. These are your attractions, your intermolecular forces between the two water molecules. And you can see here that the oxygen, which is the negative, will be attracted to the positive hydrogen. Here's the positive hydrogen being attracted to the negative. And you can see that the idea here is, uh, you know, keeps repeating itself. And that's how you get armies of molecules. A great example of this to actually see hydrogen bonding uh, in action is if you look at your water bottle, right? A water bottle, oh my God, kind of looks like a, a kind of looks like dish soap, but whatever. This is a water bottle, a water bottle, right? If you look at your water bottle, if you look at your water bottle, you will have the majority of your water down at the bottom, right? This is where the majority of your water molecules are located. However, you will have some water molecules that are trickling on the sides of the container. These water molecules are hanging on for dear life because they're not obviously being dropped into the water. But what's the attraction that is keeping them on the sides of the container? They're holding on to dear life because they've made an army of hydrogen bonding. There's probably hundreds, if not thousands, of water molecules here that are, you know, being acting as an army that basically allow it to be trapped onto the sides of the bottle. That's how strong those hydrogen bonding uh, armies are when they start getting together. Also, hydrogen bonding is a great example as to why you need a lot of pressure and a lot of temperature, high temps to break up these intermolecular forces, right? So that's why it takes a long time and a lot of heat to boil water. I mean, 100 degrees Celsius is, is a roughly a, a large number because it takes so much temperature to break these uh, hydrogen bonding intermolecular forces to allow the water molecules to turn into steam and act like a gas. But that's, that's basically all I got for you here. Um, I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. And... I look forward to helping you in more problems. Take care and have an awesome, awesome day. Okay, bye-bye.